each capillary bed has its uh, own peculiar features be it uh, cerebral circulation coronary circulation renal circulation renal circulation has some peculiar features peculiarities let's uh, try to understand some of those peculiar features there are three vital organs in the body as you are aware brain heart kidney uh, they show the phenomenon of auto regulation of blood flow for them kidney has uh, a very peculiar type of blood flow and it has some important peculiar features in its circulation let's see the peculiarities of renal circulation first this is the only circulation where capillaries drain into arterioles elsewhere capillaries drain into venules or venous compartment in the kidneys glomerular capillaries drain into efferent arterioles so something unique second very high blood flow in fact highest among the body uh, is the liver followed by kidney liver has got 25 to 27% of the cardiac output and the second best is kidney 25% of the cardiac output and if you see the blood flow per 100 gram of tissue per minute again kidney organ wise will come at the top it's the highest if you are looking at the tissues all over the body then it's the carotid body which receives a very high highest blood flow per 100 gram of tissue per minute but if you are talking of the organ then it's the kidney highest blood flow per 100 gram of tissue per minute roughly about 400 to 450 ml per 100 gram of tissue per minute so one needs to understand that kidney a small organ it weighs only one to two percent of the body weight but it receives 25 percent of the cardiac output and therefore obviously it will have a massive blood supply through its uh, through the tissue third peculiar feature uh, is uh, that it has got very high capillary hydrostatic pressure in fact highest in the body is in the kidney glomerular capillaries capillary hydrostatic pressure elsewhere in all the other capillary beds is about 15 to 20 mm of hg in the kidney in the glomerular capillaries it is three to four times this figure so it's about 60 to 75 mm of hg on an average it's taken to be 60 mm of hg the glomerular capillary hydrostatic pressure uh, now what is the reason for this the reason also is very obvious afferent arteriole that leads the blood into the glomerulus is wide and efferent arteriole is relatively narrow and therefore the blood that is coming in to the glomerulus per unit time all that blood is not able to leave the glomerulus per unit time that means there is extra accumulation of blood in the glomerular capillaries and as we are aware already that the hydrostatic pressure is a force exerted by the accumulated fluid or accumulated blood and more the amount of fluid accumulated more will be the hydrostatic pressure exerted by it so highest capillary hydrostatic pressure found in the glomerular capillaries next feature capillary filtration coefficient at all the capillary beds there is filtration of fluids and substances and that filtration occurs with a certain rate it's called as capillary filtration coefficient this rate this coefficient is 
highest for the in the glomerular capillaries it is 12.5 ml per minute per mm of hg it means what if the filtration pressure is 1 mm of hg then then in one minute 12.5 ml filtrate will be formed now the net filtration pressure at the glomerulus which is going to cause the filtration actually is plus 10 mm of hg and therefore you can see the filtration filtrate that is formed at the glomerulus per minute would be 12.5 into 10 that's 125 ml per minute or 180 liters per day so that's uh, one more peculiar feature highest capillary filtration coefficient in the body is in the for the glomerular capillaries next arterio venous oxygen difference well it depends on how much oxygen is extracted by a tissue and uh, normally elsewhere for most of the other tissues in the body the arterio venous oxygen difference is about 25% arterial blood every 100 ml of arterial blood carries 20 ml of oxygen this is arterial blood when it reaches tissues out of this 20 ml 5 ml is extracted by the tissues this is about generally anywhere in the body on an average 5 ml is extracted so that means 15 ml of the oxygen would uh, return via venous blood and therefore arterio venous oxygen difference depending on the oxygen extraction by the tissues is about 5 ml out of 20 ml so 5 on 20 is 25% this is for most of the other tissues in the body it is highest in the case of heart 75% that is heart myocardium extracts 15 out of the 20 ml oxygen that comes to it in every 100 ml blood it is least in the case of kidney least for the kidney 10 to 12% only this is also understandable because kidney a small organ as we saw and a massive blood supply so whatever oxygen that it extracts eventually it's going to be less in the context of its massive blood supply and massive amount of oxygen coming to it and therefore it is least in the kidney 10 to 12% but what is the meaning of that what is the implication of that the implication is because the arterio venous oxygen difference is least or le very less therefore more oxygen is going back via venous blood that is renal vein has more oxygen content more oxygen percentage and more oxygen content and since renal vein joins the inferior vena cava therefore remember inferior vena cava has a more oxygen content as compared to the superior vena cava which is draining the blood from the upper parts of the body and the last one is also an amazing feature everywhere else in the body metabolic rate of a tissue regulates blood flow to that tissue metabolism metabolic rate of an organ will regulate the blood flow to the or, uh, to the organ for instance if the metabolic rate increases the blood flow increases per, proportionately correspondingly in the kidney it is opposite in the kidney blood flow regulates metabolism it's the blood flow which will regulate the metabolism metabolic rate oxygen consumption atp breakdown so blood flow regulates the metabolic rate or oxygen consumption in the kidney how is it that this is reverse in the kidney it's something like this the metabolic rate in the kidney atp breakdown oxygen consumption is directly linked to the tubular load for sodium reabsorption sodium reabsorption is a two step process sodium from the tubular fluids lumen it will enter the cell lining the renal tubules via the transport proteins like enac or nkcc or ncc 
but on the basolateral membrane which is facing the blood vessel there is a there is sodium potassium pump and this sodium potassium pump is going to remove the sodium from inside the cell and finally sodium will reach the blood vessel so in a two step process sodium is reabsorbed but then as you have noticed that sodium reabsorption needs the activity of sodium potassium pump and that's that sodium potassium pump is an atpase so therefore more the sodium load for tubular reabsorption more will be the activity of sodium potassium pump that's the key feature that's unique so more the filtration of sodium uh, uh, i would rather say more the blood flow in the glomerulus more is the gfr and more the filtration of sodium more the filtration of sodium more will be the tubular load for sodium reabsorption and correspondingly the atp breakdown and oxygen consumption would also be high so that's a feature uh, a peculiar feature in the kidney and in the renal circulation